Being a man is being vulnerable. International Men's Day is a pretty important milestone for us to all to celebrate. Being a man, you guys look at you like you don't have room for failure. I look at the money I have in my bank account and like at least can support my family for the next 10 years. I have learned and unlearned that it's important to show feeling empathy if you can find the tools to shame it. Not shame yourself, but shame the fear. Then it goes even further to the back. When we talk to our brothers, we don't actually even solve the problem. I would disagree, but before I do... <laughs> thank you for joining me for this exciting, fun conversation. International Men's Day is a pretty important milestone for us all to celebrate. To kick it off, introduce yourself and maybe say something about what being a man means to you. My name is uh, Donald Ambundo. I am a father, I'm a family man. Being a man is... Uh, quite intentional for, for us to lead in the society. I'm Kevin Mishuki, currently looking after the Watusimu team. I want to start a little daringly. Being a man is being vulnerable. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> My name is Gunnars, and uh, for me, to being a man is um, being uh, the one who is showing the path, the right path to everyone who is around you, like it's your family. Starting from your family, your colleagues, your, your friends. I'm Chris Rumenda. I am the head uh, of commercial at Watu. A father also. I like what Don has said. Uh, I was waiting when I'll tell people I'm now a father. It's taken some time. Being a man goes back to the basics. It's just being a provider. But in this new context, it's not only providing the physical goods, also supporting people mentally and every other direction. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. I think we'll dig a little bit deep uh, into some of the themes. To kick us off, I guess I'm going to start by sharing a quote. It's about fear. And how do we think about fear? So the first thing, name it. If you fear it, you name it, it loses some of its power. When you do name it, whatever the voice is at the back of your head that is whispering all those fears about being a man or what it means being a man, if you can find the tools to shame it, not shame yourself, but shame the fear, then it goes even further to the back. And lastly, if you remember that uh, one of the things that is true for any fear is you're not alone. If you acknowledge that, then it just loses all power forever. I found that to be a very important thing. Name it, shame it, and remember you're not alone. Talk to me uh, about what you're afraid of the most. I'll kick off on this one. And this ties directly into uh, the word that I use, vulnerable. You know, they say hindsight is always 2020. So looking back um, in the generation that I'm proud to be a part of, which was not our parents' generation, but still uh, there were very many expectations uh, in terms of what a man needs to be. A man needs to show no emotion. A man needs to basically show masculinity. Let me use that word. And the reason why I use uh, vulnerable, and I've said this before, I think, to Proud, I may not be, you know, the smartest guy in the room. Um, I may not be um, the most handsome in the room. Uh, this room, maybe I am. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I am intentional in my feelings. I have learned and unlearned that it's important to show feeling empathy, to engage and to be, to take different POVs. Ironically, that ties to my biggest fear, uh, which is actually fear of not being able to provide. I think I can chip in uh, just to add to what Kevin is saying. Mm. Uh, you know, greatest uh, fear men have is of failure in, gen in general. Being a man, the guys look at you like you don't have room for failure. Uh, but uh, if a man or any human being is facing fear, and if he's able or she's able to overcome this fear, it's a, a really accelerator for growth. I think this is what uh, every man must, must do. Step out of their the own uh, comfort zone, face the fear and, and move on. Just to add to what I think Don and Kevin have said, so the fear of not being able to, to provide is one of the biggest fears that, uh, that we have. And this is put through when you're starting to grow up. So with that, my fear, it evolves at different stages. I remember when I was in my fourth year, I looked at my marks and I was, my, there was a possibility I might not graduate. And that's when the fear, the fear kicked in. So I remembered my mom will come with the bus of the secondary school next to our place with a whole bus to come for my graduation. And I'm not 
in that list. That triggered me to really work in, hard in my fourth year and I was able to actually graduate. Like it was a miracle for me to graduate. I was among like uh, the best performers in my, my fourth year. And if you compare that with my previous years, like first year when I was joking, it didn't make a lot of sense. So it evolves. So when you grow like uh, currently right now, so my fear is still the same, but it's a different level. At that point, it's letting down the people that are put, uh, that are my support structure. And do you think that's also tied to um, fear of letting people down? Uh, still, because I said, uh, like my mother was being called professor of loans, <laughs> like when I was in school, I was being called professor of loans. Like uh, if you if you just look at my mother, is juggling between this loan and this loan and this loan. Uh, my sister had to delay to go to school for a year for me to actually proceed. So with that, there's a lot of expectation for me to actually support and push them up. I don't know if you guys have any stories about anything, either cultural, family, or from society that you feel like when you look back, you're like, oh, that is a big part. I know you talked about your family, Chris, but is there anything else uh, that comes to mind for yes, you? Yes, just, just to add on that, like uh, I think the people around us give a sense of purpose for us on what uh, and what to do. So I look at my life like a few years when I was in Ethiopia. I didn't, I didn't have a wife. I didn't have a kid. So I'm looking at uh, the oh, people that I the freedom days. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm looking at, uh, I look at what I have. Like I look at the money I have in my bank account. I'm like, uh, this can support my family for the next 10 years. So I didn't have a sense of purpose to do better than what I was doing at that particular point. And then uh, it got to a point where by without having a sense of purpose, uh, you derail. Like, uh, that's the first point I can say as a lawyer man, I got depressed in my life. <laughs> because you don't have a sense of purpose on what, uh, on what you're going to do. But uh, when I came out of it, that's when I made the decision. That triggered me to make a decision to come to Kenya, get married, and start a family. And with that now new sense of purpose, it triggered me to be much better than, than what I have. So right now I look at my family and I'm like, oh, they need better than even what I'm having right now. So that pushes me to even work harder and harder so that I give them a better, a better life. So it plays a very big role. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and just to tie to that, um, it's important to have one sense of purpose in, and people around you um, giving that to you, uh, but as well having a support system that affirms you to go out there, put your best foot forward. Nice. Um, I just want to call out one, one thing. Uh, you three are Kenyan. I'm from Zimbabwe. I think that there's a lot. In my time that I've lived here, I found a lot that is very familiar in terms of expectations, cultural society, and how we come up. But Gunas, you come from across the oceans. <laughs> uh, how, how, do, how, would you, how would you answer that question about the pressures? What is it like? Actually, there is no big difference. It's uh, some society um, norms that uh, how the man is supposed to shape himself throughout his uh, journey to, to, to become a man. And that is like putting you in some frame and that is pushing you, you, you forward. From one point of view, yeah, it's good. You are uh, growing, but other, you face a lot of fears, fear, fear from the failure, fear from expressing your emotions. And that is something that you later on, once you are in your 20s, 30s, you start to work on. So, but uh, I think it's better to, to, to start with a balance. And I think that the, the current generation, they are um, Gen Z's, a bit uh, different. And I think it's, um, they are more balanced. They are not just, okay, let's get the best grades, be the best, earn the, the all money in the world, but balance this and emotional well-being. How about you, Donald? Yeah, mine is a bit different. I will look at it like uh, the fear is uh, societal or cultural, because I would not say I'm privileged, but you know I was born and brought up in the in the city, so my relatives or close relatives, you know, they look at us as a family like we are better off, way better off than what their rural life uh, had to offer. So you know, when we look at it like we are just equally struggling like everyone else, but they feel like you are having a head start or you are much, much better than, than what they are. So, you know, that compounds into some sort of fear that uh, you cannot allow failure to be with you. Because right. to who will you fall back to? They're looking at you and yet... Who will understand? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you had it all. <laughs> exactly. So, you see, it really puts in so much pressure that you really must uh, make it through. Yeah. Because the guys are like, who do I even go to for help? How do you think about 
the role that your community's brother would have played in shaping your ability to accept the, the fears? Very good question. So for me, like, uh, I've broken down uh, my support structure uh, into different parts. There are friends that I go to for marriage advice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> friends like me. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. There are friends, I know. <laughs> I, 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 there are friends that I go to, like, so these are called mentors. I go to them for career advice. Like, my, my current mentor was my first CEO, so she has been my mentor for almost, are uh, we talking about 12 years? So that be, remains my main mentor. And then also for social aspects. So I've been able to demarcate my friends. So I even have a mentor for financial issues. Because at first I tried to make mix these things up, you end up even uh, breaking your support uh, your support structure. Like right. for example, you have a very good friend who gives you good marriage advice, but borrows you money, then does not pay. And then so you do not, you do not even now have a relationship with them. So having demarcated that, uh, That's re- interesting. It, it's really helped a lot. Yeah. And for, for most men, and I know this will be the same for most of us, like uh, when we talk to our brothers, we don't actually even solve the problem. So we'll go out with Kevin and sit out in a bar and he's like, hey, Kevo, yesterday I slept on the couch. And he'll be like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then we move on to another story. You're not going to ask me, like, what happened? Like, why did you sleep in the couch hey, dish, and everything? Exactly. But so that, the tea, that feeling <laughs> that all of us are just going through the same, the same thing. I make it as a purpose to make sure that every week I have to meet some of my friends. Because if you just work and then home, you spend a lot of time at work. So you need to create some friends at work so that uh, when you're having those periodic and temporary things happening at work, you have someone that you can actually go out in the balcony and talk to and be okay. So that really has helped me a lot, yeah. For me, I have the same five friends. This has been um, maybe two decades, some uh, longer than that. For my five friends, we all go through the same similar things over different periods of time, right? For me, is easier to keep that circle smaller, I feel has better quality output um, rather than, and I'm not, I'm not saying I don't make friends. <laughs> um, I'm a very social guy, but uh, I know who to keep in the brotherhood, as, as you've called it. It's taken very intentional work to sustain these relationships. It could start from having common interests, but over time, um, you progress to new areas of life. My support system is actually my own blood brothers. And uh, I would, do I say fortunate or unfortunate? In our family, we don't have a sister. <laughs> That's unfortunate. We are six men. Mm. Oh, wow. mm. I being the last one. Why I'm saying that? Because being the last one, I look at my bigger elder brothers as my role models. I really confide a lot in them. I'm actually even surprised Kevin has five friends. I think <laughs> I can count two or three. <laughs> Maybe. Genuine friends. Knowing people is different from having friends, right? Yeah. So we know a lot of people. But people you can genuinely open up to, really, they can't even be more than 10. I, I can bet my life to all these guys. I would disagree. But before I do, <laughs> before I do, uh, you've lived in you? three continents, man. That's, that's so where I was going to start. Up quite a that, few as a lifelong n- nomad, it has become extremely important for me to accept that there's going to be lifelong friends that will be separated both by time and distance. Yeah. We've not talked in months. We've not been in the same space um, in years. But there are people that play some really important roles in my life to this day. Uh, and when me? I move to a new place, uh, I also try to seek that out. Um, and in every place that I've lived in, I've been lucky, I think, uh, to look back. Every city that I've lived in and worked in, I've been lucky to leave behind um, and carry with me uh, a, a, a community of brothers that are very close to me to this day. And it's the reason that I feel drawn to go back to the same places and I call those places home. Um, I'm sure you think the same, uh, being a fellow nomad. I'm not oh, kind that much nomad, yeah. <laughs> it's like I lived there, and now I'm living here. But uh, I can understand what are you talking about, because when you are not connected physically, it's actually hard to remain that, that emotional connection that you had. But uh, regarding the brotherhood, I can just reflect with my brothers. And whenever I had uh, like some hard times, in my life, they were the, the persons I'm going to and asking for emotional uh, support. Yeah. 
and also Chris mentioned uh, mentor mentors, and I, I I think a brotherhood goes together with the mentorship, and I have uh, worked in an organization where. Like the, 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 if you just join the company, you're a rookie, you've been assigned with a mentor. And I think that's a very good culture. I really like that. I mean, I was reflecting earlier that uh, as men, we have many roles, providers and so on and so on. We end up spending a lot of our times in our places of work. So work becomes a place where we actually need to be very intentional about creating the structures for mentorship, for guidance, for help. Uh, and so I'm glad that we're having this within our place of work, this conversation within a place of work, because I feel like it's very necessary uh, for us to be very intentional about investing in some of those support structures. I'll go into my car and cry. Kevin and I have had some bonding over our love for therapy. There's still that pressure like for me as a clear man going for therapy. My biggest regret with uh, therapy is not starting it sooner. The stigmatization is what I'm really still trying to figure out how we're going to overcome it. How to deal with the mental health is um, exercises. That's the best uh, therapy, actually. I seek out people that have similar experiences to what I have gone through. I don't think there's any shame in a little cry. Do you hide or do you <laughs> cry in public? <laughs> Where it comes. <laughs>